Ascending generals and priority. This is a question I get a lot of. And to be honest, uh, I can see why there's lots of confusion. And it really depends what type of player you are. So we're going to look at the four types of generals. Development, let's scratch this. We're not looking at this. Unless you're the greatest teammate in the world and all you want to do is set rallies for your team, and you probably get just as much value doing your PvP horse uh, general than ascending Alpha Flayed or Caesar, don't do this one. Don't do development. It's not worth it. So we're going to talk about the three different types. Four different types because wall general, attacking PvP, duty, and subordinate city general. So I'll say this. If you're an offensive player, I'm talking someone with big attacks, you go out in SVS and smack people all the time, or battlefield, majority of your points come from offense, do these generals, do your PvP generals. Now, some advice, only do them when you can do the full five bars. That's what I'm doing here. I have a couple uh, fragments. I could get at least up two bars, but why? The big value is in getting the fifth bar and getting the actual ascension. So don't do it. So I'm waiting on her. In the meantime, while I wait on her fragments, I do other generals. So having said that, I'm an offensive PvP player. What do I send when I can't do these and I'm waiting on fragments? I do my subordinate city generals. Why? Because they work on offense. They work on defense too, but they do work on offense. So for example, right? Darius, 35%, 20%, 20%, so 75%. And then I got him up a star and he helps even more. That these are things that you want to off, uh, off, you want to debuff on offense and defense, but offense is more important for subordinate city general ascension if you're an offensive player. So keep in mind you only have eight or nine different subs, or seven or six, whoever you are, right? Whatever your size. I have nine. So I have to pack in as many stars as I can on all of those. So I've really been working these. Some people have laughed at me for having Nero, seven stars. Yeah, well, Nero's debuffs 140% Archer, right? Or I mean HP. He does 35% times four. That's 140%. What does a really good player, like we just went over Darius at five stars. He does 75% total. So you can't keep guys at five stars anymore on subject subs. You have to up them and maximize your value on all of them. Nordic Barbarian King, possibly the best sub general in the game. One of them. What's he do at five stars? 30 range attack and then 10% on everything else. So he does 70%. So if you can get a guy up to six or seven stars, man, they really start to help. It's really, really important to do. So if you're an offensive player, and this another thing is if you're a ghoster, do your sub generals and your offensive PVP guys. Cause your, sub, Cause your duty officers and wall general aren't gonna help you on defense if you don't have troops if you're ghosting. Now, if you're a defensive player or just an average all-around player, what do you want to do? You want to help your defense. First, you want to do your wall general, okay? You want to get them to six stars. This would be your priority, possibly seven. And then you want to stop. And the re now I'm going to do a comparison. So right here, wall general at six stars will add in-city mounted troop and ground troop HP. So that's 40%. Right here, what's this guy at at six? In-city mounted troop and ground troop defense and HP. So 50%. I have a Joseph Johnson somewhere here. Let's see what he does just so we get an accurate three uh, example. So in-city mounted troop defense 35 and HP 20. So 55%. Awesome. What does a duty officer do for you? Just an average one right here, the science guy. In city ground and mounted troop defense and HP, 40%. You could have, yeah, everybody has four of these on each of the troop builders, right? Range and siege, 10%, so that's 20. And 15, 30, so 50%. What's Menshikov do? 15 times four defense, 60%. Right here, that's 60%. Two troops, defense and HP. So duty officers will get you a lot more value than doing a lot of levels on your wall general. Now you want to do your wall general first, up to six or seven stars, because he also increases these core attributes by 10. 
and that does help. I think it's 1% for 20, so if you get them two levels, you do pick up the 1%. So might as well do that. They increase by 10 on each one. Let's look at that. And yeah, they do 10. Now this is a mistake. One level is started, but the whole thing can't be completed. So I stopped on it, and I haven't been doing it, and I'm waiting till I get enough fragments. So if you're an average player, you need to do your wall general first, then your duty officers, then your subsidies uh, officers. Duty is better than uh, subs because it's actually your buffs, right? You know what you are buffing. You're buffing everything. Where when someone's, when you're going to debuff the attacker, you're, you're debuffing one specific thing, right? Like range attack or horse HP if you're attacking on offense. And you're not going to get that on all the subs. And you're going to have to do all of them to make it work properly. You can't just debuff, you know, you, you can't just go up here to six stars and be like, okay, now I've debuffed 10% more on horse HP. I'm good. I'm good to go. No, you're going to get way more value if you do all your duty officers. Like if you just look at all these, you're going to have what? Nine, 10 duty officers. All of them are going to go up 10 or 15% times 10. That's 150% across the board. You just added to every single type of defense and HP and some of them are attack so that's the order I would go so just to recap if you're an offensive player you're a stellar player you don't have to have 2,000 ground attack hey if you're on c4 maybe 1400s killing it it probably is so if that's you do your PvP generals until you run out of fragments then pause and then do your sub city generals to debuff that city that you're attacking and just keep working them. If you're a defensive player or just someone who's just your average casual player, you know, you just play, you join rallies, do your wall general to six or seven, then do all your duty officers to six. And then repeat, go back to your wall general and then go get them one more star or until you run out of fragments and then go back to all your duty officers and start getting them up. And then when you get so high on your duty officers, which is basically going to be level six or seven, start doing your sub cities, start getting them up and packing in the debuffs in that area. So keep it, remember, it's easier to go to six stars, right? Right here. It's going to cost me 100 per level and then 350 for the final one to get her up to seven stars. But if I want to get Mark Antony up, who I'm never going to because I don't have uh, uh, fragments for him, so I don't know, it's less. It's only 80 per level. And then the last one I think is 120. So you get more value going up the lower star levels. So basically get them all to six, then get them all to seven, and then all to eight, unless it's your absolute uh, important ones like wall general or PVP offensive generals, get them up. Another thing to keep in mind too is how much are they going to help you? So I have this debate with uh, Ulysses Grant. I made him my lead siege general because I can actually get fragments to ascend him. But now I'm in a catch-22 where it's like, yeah, well, if you put him to six stars, you get 5%. Awesome. Right? And level two ain't very good. In city wounded to death on the enemy. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Like killing troops doesn't really help me. Right? Like, that, that doesn't really help me win the attack. That's after the attack. March size is awesome, 14%, especially if I'm going to be throwing some of those big solos. That's cool. But basically, I got to get him to eight stars. So that's a big commitment before he really starts to help me. And then the next one's 20% more. So keep that in mind. How much do they actually really help at one level right so if it's not your main pvp you don't have to do all of them you don't have to get them all up to seven or eight or nine or ten focus on one and then start to focus on the others and make sure you're helping yourself in a well-rounded way so do the pvp troop that helps you the most if you're not good at ground don't do your ground general just because other people are doing it almost everybody's pretty good at archer because it's an early game, easy point thing, especially if you're going for wings. So focus on him first, unless you're truly elite. And then what helps Archer? If you go to debuffs, you want to debuff horse HP on offense. So this is an excellent general, and you should have quite a few of him. 
Mounted Troop HP, 20. Next level, 10 more. The next level, 10 more, so 40%. Pack that on four or five subs, you're looking at 160, 200% debuff by getting them to sevens. So anyways, this is Genghis. Let me know your thought process on how you choose who to ascend in, uh, in Blood of Air's Trial of Knights. So Genghis, like, subscribe, leave a comment.